Hello everyone, welcome to the HasMotion YouTube channel and second tutorial video on Visual 3D. This video will cover visualizing data. It has two main objectives. The first is to teach you how to assign a model to movement trials, and second is to introduce you to working with the movement trials. In the first tutorial, we use the standing calibration file to define the various bones of a subject's lower body, and in effect, built a 3D model of the subject. In this tutorial, we will use Visual 3D to assign the tracking data of a movement trial to a 3D, 3D model to create an animated representation of the subject's lower torso. To prepare for this tutorial, we must first download the movement trial file named walkingtrial1.c3d. This is available on the tutorial page on the HasMotion Wiki website. You may also choose to download the tutorial2.cmz file, which contains the end results of this tutorial. This would be useful as a secondary resource in verifying progress. With the new workspace open in Visual 3D, we can open the CMZ file saved from Tutorial 1. In our case, it is already open. We can verify that the model file named loweerbodystatictrial.c3d is present in the column models slash calibration files. Then we can navigate to the file menu and then click open slash add. A dialog box will open it will appear indicating that, that files are already open. We can select insert new files into your currently open workspace and click OK. Now we can navigate to the location of the walking trial that you downloaded for this tutorial named walkingtrial1.c3d. We can select it and click open. Now we can verify that the model file appears in the column labeled motion files, which it does. Now we can navigate to the Signal and Events Processing tab, which will open this viewing area. The movement trial has yet to be associated to the model. <clears throat> we can click play on the animation to see that only the markers will be animated. Nav we can then navigate to the Model drop-down menu, and then select Assign Model to Motion Files. This will open a dialog box where we can select our static trial file here, and the walking trial. C3D and then we can click OK. Now we can click on the models page and then go back to the signals and events processing and make sure the view segment toggle is pressed on. The 3D animation viewer should now display a skeleton of the lower body that has been associated with your movement data. You can animate the skeleton by clicking the play button in the VCR controls at the bottom of the page. Just a note, if you see one of the feet missing uh, on, on the model, don't be concerned. This error was purposely introduced in the marker labels to fix it in the next section. Simple marker labeling errors may become apparent at this stage. For example, the missing right foot segment in the previous section. The RFT1 marker was accidentally labeled RFT1A when the marker was identified in the data collection program. These types of errors can easily be corrected in Visual 3D. On the left side of the screen, there are several folders. We can click the plus side next to the target folder to open the inner folders. Within the inner folder named original, we can click the plus sign once again in order to reveal the contents of the original C3D data file. The red dots are the original signals as labeled by the capture system. We can right click RFT1A and select, re select rename label to prompt the program to open a dialog box. In the, dialog, in the rename signals dialog box, we can enter RFT1 within the enter a new name box. This will be the new name for RFT1A. This new name matches what is in the model file and solves the problem which did not allow the foot to be displayed. We can click OK. The data file has now been corrected. However, the workspace has not been updated yet, so the segment will not appear in the animation. To get this segment to reappear, we need to get Visual 3D to recalculate the model. There are two options of ways that we can do this. The first is to click the Recalc button on the toolbar here. And as we can see, the foot has popped up now. The second is to force the recalculation by switching to the Model Building tab and clicking on Build Model. Either option you choose, the 3D figure will display the missing foot once the recalculation is complete. Now that we have made a correction to the C3D file, we can export it. We can navigate to the file menu, click on the export subfolder, and then click on export C3D file. 
This will open this dialog box. We can click on Walk in Trial 1 in the drop down menu for the File to Export box and then click on Browse next to New File Name. <clears throat> From the Save As dialog box, we can browse to the location where you store your files and then enter Corrected Walking Trial 1. This will also save as a C3D file. A quick note, it is permissible to overwrite the existing file, but it is good practice to keep your original data intact, so we recommend choosing a new name. After we've clicked save and come back to the dialog box, we can click export. This will show that it has exported the file. Now we can begin viewing the model. It may be useful to focus on specific physical features of the model. We can reset the camera's perspective to lock onto a segment and keep it centered onto the screen. To focus on one segment, we must follow a series of, step, of, a series of steps. First, we can stop the animation before proceeding. Then we can right click the pelvis of the 3D figure, and this will open a list of viewing options. In this list, we can select track segment center of mass with camera. Now we can click the play button, and you can see that the camera tracks the subject with the pelvis centered in the middle of the screen. We can pause it and then right click the pelvis again to select or to deselect this option. This removes the check mark and reverts the former way of tracking the segment. It may also be useful to learn some of the animation control options. Firstly, the left mouse button is for rotation, so if you were to move it around, the model rotates with the mouse, and then holding the right mouse button down and moving it around is to zoom. The same, the same uh, feature can also be used with the middle, middle scroll button on the mouse. Next, we can begin to explore our data. Data exploration is a key aspect of attempting to ensure that the original data has been recorded correctly. It may seem odd to some people to exhort the values of looking at your data, but it has been in our experience, however, that too few laboratories take the time to examine their data closely with a critical eye. Visual 3D has several tools to help you view your data and is continuing to evolve in regards to data visualization. We always welcome new visualization ideas from our users to be implemented in the future. <clears throat> quick, quick, quick View is one of the tools in Visual 3D to help you view your data. You can use it to display the raw data for a signal, display the, the graph for a signal, view the processing history of a signal, and export a single signal file to an ASCII file. To open and view Quick View, you must follow the following steps. First, in the data tree on the left, the folder with the original signal should already be open, but if it isn't, do the following again. We can click the plus sign next to the target folder, and then click the plus sign next to the original folder to expand the C3D files available. Then we can click on the marker labeled LFT2. We can left click on it. Now this will open the data view dialog box with, and we can navigate to the data, view, data values tab. Here you can see the raw data or a, an option to export it to an ASCII file. On the data, data values tab, scroll down to the 24th frame. This is where the data capture be, in the system began to collect data for this segment. No data was recorded for this segment in the previous 23 frames. This is not abnormal, but it is good to be aware that some markers will not, have any, will not have data for every frame. The reasons for this vary, but in this particular case, the left foot was not in view of the cameras until the 24th frame. If you see a blank frame in the middle of a data set, it may be an indication of an erroneous result. Within the same dialog box, we can open the graph data tab to view the analog graphs. A quick view can help you locate the obviously incorrect or noisy data available in these in these in these signals then we can open the signal processing history tab currently this tab is empty but you would usually view your processing history of signals here visual 3d has a command pipeline which allows the users to prepare scripts for processing data the pipeline can be can be found at, in on this icon on the upper toolbar typically these commands create new create new data that is derived or interpolated from the original data Determining the, determining the distance between two points would be an example of such deriving data. The Signal Processing History tab will tell you what events, if any, took place on the data. As we can see here, since it's empty, uh, 
there is no pipeline that has been ran on our data so far. Now we can close the, the dialog box with, by clicking the X in the right hand corner. A quick note, the data view can only be used for one active file at a time. If you select all files or a tag, the left mouse button, the le clicking the left mouse button will not do anything. An exception to this rule is that metric signals will be displayed for more than one active file. There is another way to view signal graphs other than the signal data graphs in the data view window that we saw previously. These graphs that we will see are interactive and offer different viewing options of the data that we will explore later. When activated, signal graphs appear on the right side of the screen and can be visualized and can be used to visualize or add event labels. So we can move the viewing area of the model to the left by dragging by left clicking and dragging to make some room for the graphs that will be placed here. So to activate an inter interactive signal graph, we can follow the following steps. In again in the data tree on the left, we can right click on LFT2. Then we can select the graph X, Y, Z, and residual option and click new graph. This will populate the right side of the screen with the graphs that we need. Now we can left click to select a graph and hover the mouse over any point in order to, in order to display a to yellow tooltip which will appear that displays information about, and about that point on the graph. This corresponds to one frame of data uh, of motion capture. Now that we have learned how to display a signal graph, we can learn how to format and animate it. From the view menu, we can click on view graph animation frame line, and this will create a line on the graphs that will correspond to a point in the animation. We can then click play on the VCR control panel to activate the animation. As you can see, the vertical line on the signal graphs will move along with the 3D figure. To format the signal graph, we can right click anywhere on the graph to open an options menu and then select format graph. If you want to select more than one graph, we can hold down control and select multiple. Now we can right click down again and then select format graph. Any changes that you make in this graph format dialog box will apply to each of the graphs you selected. So in this case, the X, Y, and Z graphs will all be affected by the changes we make in the graph, form in the graph format dialog box. <coughs> it is up to you, you the user, on formatting your own graph and once you've entered your desired changes you can click apply for it to be shown on the graphs. A note is that not all of the options apply to the signal and events processing tab. The following are some of the options that do apply. Show grid, ticks, proportional units, show points, show baseline, apply to all selected, and apply to primary selection only. Once you're done making your desired selections, you can click apply and then close this graph format tab. Now the changes should reflect on the signal graphs. Thank you for watching.